Statistics for 2014 relating to the number of homicides committed are being compiled by the Belize Police Department as the calendar year winds down. Anecdotally, it has been said that violent crimes have reduced considerably when compared to previous years. As it stands, our records show that there has been a total of 139 murders since January, a majority of which occurred in Belize City. That, however, will be concluded at the end of the month. What we've set out to do until then is look back at a few of those incidents and the profound effect they've had across the Belizean society. We begin with an excerpt from a keynote address delivered by Minister of National Security John Saldivar during a commencement ceremony for the last police intake. No one in the media is bothering to look at the numbers before declaring that crime is spiraling out of control. Yes, it's a cycle which we all know. However, a closer look at the numbers will tell you that the overall trend for 2014 is still far better than 2012 when we had 145 murders. Currently, we have had 93 murders for 2014, only five more than the 88 we had up to the end of October last year, and still six less than the 99 for the entire 2013, which is our best year in five years. Our projections for the rest of this year, keeping our fingers crossed for success in the next 11 weeks, is for our murder count to be well below the 2012 mark of 145, well below the 2011 mark of 124, and well below the 2010 mark of 129. This would mean that 2014 could very well still turn out to be the second best year in the last five years. And still, according to some, the sky is falling down. With approximately two weeks remaining until year's end, contextually, the figures for 2014 indicate that the present number is just six murders shy of 2012, the worst in five years. On October 23rd, career diplomat Jose Rodrigo de la Rosa Stanford, a Panamanian national assigned to Belize as Chargé de Fer, was savagely dispatched in a secluded area of Belmopan near La Chosa. His death, allegedly at the hands of 18-year-old Wilson Echevarria, rocked the diplomatic community. Considered one of several high-profile murders, Stanford's demise precedes that of former politician and mayor of Orange Walk, Ramon Cervantes Sr. Cervantes was reportedly abducted near Honeycamp on July 1st and later held for ransom. Despite a massive search and rescue operation, all hopes of finding him alive were dashed a few days later when his remains were unearthed from a shallow grave. It's a very, very shocking thing that has happened to uh, Mr. Ramon Cervantes. I mean, to be uh, abducted, to be kidnapped and murdered. And in, in the course of this murder, apparently he was badly beaten up, tortured in fact. Um, it, it should shock the conscience of the nation, because here this man was a public figure for many years. Uh, as you said, he was a mayor, actually a school teacher for many years, and a senator as well. Cervantes's murder would prove to be most controversial, with threats of lawsuits tossed around in the wake of an explosive audio recording released months later. In Belize City, on the afternoon of September 17th, a casual game of dominoes ended in tragedy, when 56-year-old Cyril McFoy was gunned down inside his yard. The incident would trigger a spate of retaliatory shootings across the old capital. When it was all said and done, several men, including Clifford Flores, had lost their lives. Well, like I say, Asani, all of you fam familiar? Because Belize is a small society, and they no big, they no New York with it. All of them know what happened. You understand? Everybody know about the red and color vehicle, that they always the patrol boat and the white and color one that belong to a certain character. They are all aware of the threat George Street pose to the city, if not to the country. Because we see the prevalence of how this gang violence is spreading to other areas of the country, right? And when I say I believe that George Street, because I say, my brother, this is a Belizean society. People like talk. It is here, I say, but they got a saying, if they're not so, they nearly so. So we heard the talking, like I said, I'm not in my family. Two other families apparently lost loved ones last night. Everybody was bawling, consoling each other. Everybody had a George Street chance. They think they run the city. 
Perhaps the most shocking of all homicides this year has been the shooting death of veteran cyclist Ernest Jamin Mean. The 42-year-old was struck once in the head by a bullet fired at close range. He had been visiting the home of his children on George Street. I received a call on Saturday morning. I would say in the vicinity of 11.25 a.m. telling me that Jamin had just been shot. Um, I could not believe it. So I did the best I could to immediately verify if this was so. I was positive beyond the shadow of a doubt when Midget, one of the lieutenants in my constituency, had already called me and he went to the hospital and he called me a second time to verify that he was looking at Jamin's dead body in the back of his truck which they had used to transport him and I heard the blood-curdling screams of his children in the background. While the number of murders for 2014 may not set a record, the diversity clearly shows that society, regardless of economic or political status, race or orientation, is affected by violent crimes. Reporting for News 5, I am Isani.